San Diego has long been well known for its beautiful beaches, famous landmarks, and bomb Mexican food. But thriving within this community is one of the city's best kept secrets, its DIY art and music scene. A youthful, lively, and electric subculture of fine art and live music that lives just beneath the city's mainstream. But what exactly is it? And how did it come to be? The DIY scene is composed of privately owned galleries and venues that showcase art, live music, and oftentimes both at the same time. So DIY, in my opinion, is to completely cultivate and create something from your own choosing and not depend on any other like big corporate or big money or big brother sorts of uh, help and aid. It's all from your end. It's You reach out to those to help you and it's all under your own uh, choice. My name's Avia Rose. I paint and I go to SDSU, which is where we are. So I got involved because on the bridge by the dorms there was these guys passing out flyers for like their house show or whatever. And then when I started going to those, I realized like, oh, we can integrate these music and art shows. And then when I thought of that, apparently people were already doing it and I was discovering like people having these art and music shows. They also give me a place to show my work, which is awesome. Uh, Cause like if, if these spaces didn't exist, like all this shit would be rolled up under my bed and never shown. Weird Hues, they primarily opened up just to be art, but now they're having like dance nights and music shows there, but their thing is like art shows first. And I think Swish is kind of the same way. Um, like art shows first, and then if we have extra time, shows too, which is really cool. Um, hosting live music was also something that just came like naturally. Someone was like, oh, and I play music here. And we're like, okay, let's make that happen. And then like people started to reach out a lot. Would get really intimate and like crowded in there. And like we've had shows that are experimental and like people are like sitting down, like meditating and getting all spiritual. Or it's like super like hardcore and like everyone's just like bumping into each other, moving around, but like still having a good time and like really respectful. Teros is just one example of a gallery that blurs the boundary of what defines a gallery and a music venue. Another one of these is Swish Projects. Swish is another piece of the puzzle that makes up this complex scene. This space is special because it embraces everything from calm and peaceful art showcases, like this gallery with AJ Khan, to this. Hector, you want to tell me where we're at? They wanted shows in San Diego, and I was like, okay, yeah, I have a show at my house. And the cops kept coming. So I was canvassing my neighborhood, like, please don't call the cops. I came home, like, red in the face. It was a hot, sunny day, and my dad sees me, and he's like, you know, I have a warehouse. And I'm like, Dad, I did not know you had a warehouse. <laughs> cool, like, see bands in the raw, like, their very first gigs. I love that. A lot of these amazing touring acts that come down here that we love fondly, they never play to all ages venues. They only play to these exclusive um, bar venues at limit 21 and over. And it really takes away the aspect of incorporating what a music scene is that is includes all ages, especially for a, an artist that has a pool with a younger audience as opposed to an older one. You bring them down here to San Diego to play at a bar show and they don't get a good turnout. What does that make? What, what does that build for them? What do they see after that? It's like, is this San Diego? Is it, is it really that small? Do people not like us here? So we want to ensure that we, we bring them down to the actual music scene that really represents who we are and what we support, especially those who are underage and can go inside these venues. But of course, running a DIY space isn't always easy. 
These galleries and venues exist without a lot of the resources and staff that larger establishments have access to. Uh, we're being really resourceful in how we access resources and, you know, community members work together to get things done there. Um, as opposed to like a lot of institutions that get their own like grant funding or um, donors and sponsors and all of that stuff. Like, we're sponsoring ourselves, you know? At the end of 2019, a DIY gallery called La Bodega that had made a name for itself in Barrio Logan was forced to shut down and relocate. Once their lease ended, their rent was raised to an amount a small gallery could no longer afford. People were like raising money so that they could keep affording the rent there, but then they were like, we appreciate all the support, but we don't even want to be at a place where the landlord doesn't care about what this gallery has done for this community. I feel like people actually take us more seriously knowing that like we are like hands-on with it. So yeah, it's hard to definitely see the pitfall aside from just being like stressed financially, but that's also like so small and like doesn't really stress me out as much as like I guess I should stress out about because like there are a lot of um, benefits from it too and like we are ultimately learning and it's just it's fun it's like over time we're just like getting to understand um, what we're capable of. These spaces bring something irreplaceable to San Diego. They give people a place to see their favorite bands, they give up-and-coming artists a chance and they give people a community that they can be themselves in. Whatever they do, like make it like a safe environment, a safe space, like it has to be welcoming to any type of people. Um, like I'm a really anxious and nervous person, but I've noticed that these show, like these spaces, I'm totally okay with being alone and um, just looking at the artwork, talking to people if I do, but okay if I don't either, like either or. So. It's a sense of a community. Um, it puts you somewhere that you wouldn't expect to be. It, it really exposes you to different people, different environments, and different, different music genres. These are our neighbors, these are our friends, this is us. You know, as I think that this generation that we're included in, you know, from like you know, Gen Z to millennials, as we're like learning to navigate art in San Diego, we're like uplifting that entire arts community by like our growth and by us learning how to do things our own way and doing things independently, like that's gonna overall just like make San Diego the arts and culture city that I see to like the rest of the world, you know? Being from San Diego and like people were not really able to like fully express themselves in the like when I was growing up, like people were still like shamed for being who they are. And I feel that there's a lot more acceptance going on. And I definitely feel that like it's going to impact the future. Ooh.